Hello everyone, hope you are learning well. So in this video, we'll discuss the third problem of lead code weekly contest 335. It's a media level problem. And you can see the accuracy is very, very low. Um, so yeah, <laughs> let's see what the problem is asking you to do. So split the array to make co-prime products. Okay. Um, also, the accuracy of this problem is much, much, much lower than the accuracy of the fourth problem. That is a hard level problem. So uh, it would be interesting to discuss this problem. Okay. So you are given a zero index integer array nums of length n a split at an index i where i lies between 0 to n minus 1 sorry 0 to n minus 2 is called valid if the product of the first i plus 1 elements and the product of the remaining elements are co-prime okay for example if this is your array then a split at index 0 is valid because 2 and 9 are co-prime now you have 2 3 3 so if you split here so there are two things first is this is the product the second is this is the this is the first product let us let's call it x this is the second product so this is two this is nine if these two are co-prime co that means this is a valid split and you need to return the minimum index at which the split is valid okay so return the smallest index i at which the array can be split uh, validly or return minus one if there is no such split two values val1 val2 are co-prime if the gcd of these two values equals to one okay now let's see a concrete example so this is my array okay if i split at index number zero so i have four seven eight fifteen three and five index number zero one five okay now what do you do let me just uh, change the color so these are the indices now what do you do if you want to split here then this is one part this is another part okay if you want okay when you do that the product of this part is only four and what is the product of this 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 big value okay and is the gcd of these two like what is the gcd of these two part four and this so that is four that means it is not a valid split for a va for a split to be valid the gcd has to be one okay now if you want to split at this take these two values four and seven the product is 28 what about the remaining values the product is this again the gcd of 28 and this is four so that means this is also not a valid split you come here then you pick the first three values that is 4, 7 and 8. The product is 224 and the product of this remaining part is 225. Now the GCD is 1. Now this is the first point where you find where you find that the GCD of these two parts equals to 1. That means these two parts are co-prime. So where have you split this? Where have you find this? That is at split i equals to 2. So your answer will be i equals to 2. At the second index, I was able to find the first valid split. Okay. Now if I take the second example. So... Um, let me just take it yeah if i take the second example so what happens uh, just see this uh, at every index at, at each index now just see the index can go up to here one two three four five six for six elements the index varies from zero to five, zero to n minus one but here you will only split from index zero to this four why because when, once you move to the last index right what will happen Th there will be no second part because when you split at the ith index you include 0 to ith element, element right so if i equals to n minus 1 what will happen the first part will have all the elements however the second part will not have any even a single element right so that's why uh, that's not the case you will be doing it only from 0 to n minus 2 or like that okay 0 to n minus 2 now here you can see for every split none of the splits have gcd equals to one so you return minus one that's the what that's what problem is asking you to do now let's come to the uh intuition part okay intuition part now just see i want to find whether two numbers are co-prime co or not right now if i find the factors of each number if i find the factors of each number, like for example four can be written as two into two 7 can be written as 7 because 7 is a prime number uh, 5 can be written as 3 into 5 meaning break every number into its prime factors okay 8 can be written as 2 into 2 into 2 3 can be written as 3 5 can be written as 5 okay so the first thing is the limit here is nums of i can go up to 10 to the power 6 what i'll do first i'll generate all the prime numbers using c of eratosthenes or whatever algorithm you want to use so c algorithm is used to calculate the prime numbers uh, okay up to a given range so here I will find all the prime numbers till 10 raised to the power 6. Why? Because every number can be represented in the form of product of prime numbers. So either that number itself is, is prime or it can be represented in the form of product of prime numbers. Okay. So I will break each number like this. 
Now, the second thing is, once I do that, I do not need to find the product of every number, right? These products will overflow. This cannot be uh, kept into a particular data type, right? Just see the range. This this is not at all possible, right? Because suppose I, each number is 10 to the power 6 and I have 10 to the power 4 numbers. So how will I fit this? How will I fit it in any data type, right? So that is not possible. So the trick here is break it. Don't find the product, rather find the prime factors, okay? So keep a track of the prime factors of each number. So this is, this is your first part and this is your second part of the array, okay? In this part, take a map, take a map or any data structure. Map will be easy, okay? <laughs> take a map for all the numbers here, okay? For all the numbers here, find the prime factors and keep its corresponding frequency in a map. Let's call it a prefix map, okay? And this is the right side. So in my code, I've used factors here, but use the name suffix map. Okay. So what I mean to say for like, for example, for these two numbers, store the frequency of their prime factors in this map. And for these numbers, store the, uh, fact, uh, you know, frequency of prime factors of all these numbers in this map. Okay. How will I store it? So suppose my first number is two. And suppose the second number is six in the first half. So what I'll do in my map, in my prefix map, I'll have this can be written as two. This can be written as two into three. So in my map, I'll have two has a frequency of two, one for this, one for this, and three is a frequency of one. Similarly, I'll create a map for the this part and I'll do that. Now what I'll do for every step, if, I, if, I, if I'm standing here, what I'll do, I'll check that in this map, I have a two. Okay. So is there a two present in this map as well? If it is present, that means these two parts cannot be co-prime. Okay, these two parts cannot be co-prime because the meaning of these things is this, this number, the product of these numbers will have at least one, two. At least have one, two as a factor. And here also, if the map has at least one, two, means one occurrence of two, that means here also if I find the product, what will happen? Uh, that will have at least one, two. So now, if I want to find the GCD of this part and this part, then it will be at least two. However, I want it to be one, right? So the GCD can be one only if there are no common factors in this map and this map, right? That's the first part. Now, the second part is how do you do it for all the indices? So simple, take a map, like this is the suffix map or a factors map, whatever you call it, take a map, keep the frequency, uh, like keep the frequency of factors of all the numbers initially here, right? Now you start from I equals to zero, Okay, start from i equals to zero and the second map, add the frequ factor frequency in that map and remove it from this map and then do the comparison. Like for example, whatever you have done till here, okay, this is the prefix map, this is the suffix map. When you move to the next index, so whatever element is present here, right, remove the, um, what do you call it, contribution of this guy from the suffix map and add it, its contribution. Uh, to this prefix map and do the comparison, right? So that's the trick sort of, um, I would say sliding window thing uh, using a contribution technique, if you are aware of contribution technique. So uh, this is how you do it. Now, if I show you the code, it's just implementation of whatever I've told you. I've taken an array list primes. This will store the prime numbers. I've taken n equals to 10 because n equals to 10 to the power 6 because I want to find the prime numbers till n raised to the power n equals to 10 to the power 6. This is sieve of Eratosthenes. Okay. You can find its tutorial, editorial video, whatever you wanted over the internet. So that is pretty easy to understand, but a good topic to read. Okay. So this is my main function. The first thing that I do is I call sieve of Eratosthenes. Okay. This, this guy, what it does is it, it adds all the prime numbers to 10 to the power 6 into this array list. Okay. My part is done now answer equals to minus one. Now, this is the first map that I was taking. So I could have named it suffix as well. But uh, again, <laughs> writing code first, so I named it factors. Now just see what I'm doing. This 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 code is traversing the whole array and adding the uh, factors of each of the numbers in the array into the map. So what I do my current number is num nums of i. Now if the current number itself is prime, how do I know that? While calculating the sieve of Eratosthenes, just see, I have taken a Boolean array and whichever number is prime, it is equals to two. Okay. This is just an optimization. You can skip it as well. But suppose you have a, a, a prime number, which is close to 10 to the power six. So instead of traversing the whole array, you just check it that if, 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 if it is a prime number, then you add it. So factors dot current number factors dot get all default current. So this is a shortcut of that. If you have this key present in your map, 
okay then add plus one to it okay or if you don't have this key present then what you do you return a default value zero i'll add plus one to it and then put it into the map simple that's the meaning of it okay so let me just erase it this is the first part now what is the second part so if it is a prime you add it directly or else if it is not a prime what you do you will start using your prime numbers that you have generated so while i have not traversed all the prime numbers and my current equals is greater than one meaning suppose your number is eight so what do you will do the first prime number is two so you see that if the number that i want to find the factors of is divisible by the current prime number equals equals zero so what i do i just a second let me erase it so what i do i while it is divisible by zero i keep on dividing it meaning i have eight i have two so eight is divisible by two so i divide eight by two i divide it i add it into the map and i update my number four now now this is a while loop so i again check is four mod two equals to zero yes it is so you again update your map and you divide now four by two equals to two you again do this okay so that will give you uh, a frequency of that okay in my number eight two came three times suppose you have six so you do it with two you get three okay and so on so yeah this is what i do i do it till my number is what do you call it uh, greater than zero so in this way i populate my map okay now the second code is also very much similar i could have written a utility function for this as well but my motive is to tell you whenever you see a problem how you approach it how i approach it obviously that could not be the best possible way to do but that's the motive that in 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 real scenarios whenever you see a problem what are the possible solutions that you can write okay maybe it is not the most optimized one but, but how do you write it okay i could have cleaned this solution a lot but yeah i want to show you the raw solution that i wrote okay that is the motive so now i take the second map that is a prefix map what are the indices where i can split 0 to n minus 1 sorry 0 to n minus 2 that is why it is less than n minus 1 now what is your current number i do the exact same thing exact same thing with one extra step that while you add it to the prefix map you also remove it from the factors map okay so add it into the prefix map and decrement the frequency in the factors map now if the frequency of the current number has become zero you remove it from the map okay because why do you want to keep that two comes the zero time okay remove it similarly if this is not a prime number you do the exact same thing add it into prefix map and decrement the frequency from the factors map and if it has become zero you remove it exactly the same code now okay now once you have done it what do you do this is the first step you run a loop you populate prefix map and update the factors map and then you do that okay let's check that are the keys present in prefix and the factors map different so how do you check it whatever the keys factors map have just check are they present in sorry whatever the keys in prefix map are there okay are those present in factors or not so if it is present just see factors dot contains key factor okay so found equals to two just break the loop that yes it is present however if your found remains to true that means no all the keys were distinct you return i that this is a valid split or at last you return uh, minus one right so that's the way to solve this problem the question was asking you to find the uh, gcd thing so you don't need to calculate the product because that is uh, not the best thing to do because that will not fit into any data type right so, so yeah that's how you solve these type of problems uh, break that problem into prime factorization and then you will be able to do it right so now i can understand why the accuracy is so low that more than 11,000 submissions but only 928 have been accepted so yeah uh, that's it for this problem i hope you learn something new from this video do support it by giving a thumbs up do subscribe to the channel as well uh, also in case of any queries add it into the comment section i'll revert on each one of them thank you take care bye bye